Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I got this. Okay. Okay, I... I will... I think I'm... Okay, I completely forgot about that move, to be honest. Let me check back. Okay, never mind. Um, we don't... Okay, yeah, we have one more move to get. My, my, my bad. Um, so, yeah, we have... We can now um, do the beatdown on enemies when we grab them. That's, that's going to be pretty handy if we need... If we need some, to get some extra... If we need to, like, get a, a group of enemies in, like, a stun state, I guess, and just pummel them for a little bit. Um, race for the goal. Funnily enough, Abatos is the only stage in the game that has two normal um, day stages in this version. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure why they did it like that, um, but it, it is what it is, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit weird. But yeah, sometimes they um, make you play stages again, but there's a extra there's an extra thing you need to worry about. Like this is time attack, so. We have to go through these gates every now and then to get our, get our time back up um, and just simple stuff like that. I'm not sure if the level design itself changes that much, but I guess we'll find out as we play through these um, more and more. I do know that I do know that some of these time attack missions do actually have entirely new level design um, and like they're not related to the normal. Or that they don't share like areas from the normal, um, what is it, day stage of the continent. And those are some of my favorite ones because those are ones that you don't really ex you don't really know what to expect. And it's essentially a whole new act. And I there was a thing up there. I'm I'm gonna restart. <laughs> this is gonna waste time, I know, but hey, we gotta get all the stuffs. Um... But yeah. This isn't, this isn't like... We aren't like doing anything too crazy new here, but... It... it gi it's gonna give us a new, another move medal, so... Eh. Can't complain, really. <laughs> And I do feel like this game does it. I, I do feel like this is a better way of doing this than the way the HD one does it. Where the the time attack stuff is linked to the hot dog, hot dog missions. And I, I remember ranting about this before, but essentially what they are is uh, you have um, three sets of missions for each type of uh, challenge. Um, and if you want to do all of those, that means completing the stage at minimum nine times. And quite frankly, screw that, because that's absolutely absurd. And I don't know why they make you do that. Like, it would, it would make more sense if they made it so you can just pick the hardest mission right away. And, that, and then that just counts as you doing all of them. Because if you can do the harder one, chances are you can do the easier ones. So I don't know why they did it like that, honestly. Um, like, they could- Okay, I don't know what happened there, but... Should be good now. But yeah, I don't- A better way to do it, I think, would have been to make it so... Each of the- Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it cuts the level in half. Fair enough. Um, uh, but, yeah, we got music- music track uh but yeah i i don't i think an easier a better way to do it would have just been to um what what you call it would have been to just uh go let, make it so the higher level challenges just required more rings to spend instead of like having you to play through all specific levels like i i don't 
I don't know. It's not worth it. <laughs> it's really not worth doing the hot dog missions. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna double check real quick, because I don't actually know if we have enough medals for any of these. I know for a fact we can't do the Missouri ones because those require a, a ridiculous amount. <laughs> so. Oh, okay, we have one of them. All right, cool. So let's see what's behind door number one. Or well, more like door number three at this point, but you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, okay, I remember this one. Okay, so this is a little bit of a light puzzle. Um, oh, hey. Okay, so we got another... Um, got, uh, what is it? We, we got another... Um, Avatar stage to play, so that um, that's one of the two stages that we have now. Actually, now that I think about it, the other night stage might just be a tutorial for the um, other uh, the tutorial. Okay, good. It it might just be a tutorial for the um, last move we get for the Werehog, so it it might just be a day stage we have left. So that's. Well, that's that's all fine, fine and dandy. Um, I don't actually remember what it, what it is, so I guess we'll find out shortly, and then we'll. I guess there'll be a, t and then after that will be time to end this particular session of the Wii version. Um, I can check the other doors to make sure that we don't have access to another one of these after after the fact, but I highly doubt it. We're only going to get one more moon medal. <laughs> Alright, so we've got to put it up here. Oh, there's... Ugh! Okay. Okay, that's Holoska. We can't do that at all because we haven't gone to Holoska yet, so that doesn't matter. That, that doesn't really mean much to us right now. Um... Yo, <laughs> I'm just trying to put it down on the elevator, on the escalator, not, not escalator, um, god damn it. Okay, you know what? Wait, hold on. What does that button do again? <laughs> it is... I mean... I would like that life. So that does... Okay, yeah, it sends it the other way. Okay. That makes sense. But I need to be able to, like, block that light. This is not supposed to be complicated, but dude, <laughs> I don't want to do this. I don't want to. I don't want it to do that. Okay, please, please, just throw it. I don't care. <laughs> okay, so like, how do I do this without killing myself? Like, it, bruh. Like, I, I can't get it with normal Sonic. I need I need the double jump. <laughs> no! Why is this not working? <laughs> this isn't supposed to be hard. What am I doing wrong? Okay. Happy days with Werehog dying. Sad days. Oh. I don't know what the hell I'm on about. Alright, let's try this again. Now, can I just do that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what the hell? Yo. Like, what the hell? Okay. Uh. Uh. <laughs> this doesn't, like, feel right. There we go. That didn't feel like it should have been done like that. But I'll take it. Ugh. Nice. 
And, uh, let's just go to the world map. And let's see what the last stage here is. Gather rings at top speed? Okay. Seems simple enough. Now we're back here. Oh, okay, just give us a bunch of rings from the start. I should probably mention uh, the the little spin dash thing I'm doing at the start stages. Um, I know that it, it, the 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 yeah. I don't know if the game ever tells you about it. Is that met, is that the item over there? Can't actually tell. I'm gonna go back just to be set just to be sure. But, yeah, the uh, spin dash I'm doing at the start of these stages, um, basically how it works is, as soon as the, as soon as, as soon as the, as, uh, Sonic says go, essentially, um, that's, um, that's your cue to press the boost button, and it'll give you a, it'll basically give you a starting boost, and, and, what, what, uh, there. It will essentially act as like, th think of it like a a boost in a racing game, and it also gives you it also gives you like one boost to use like right away. So it it's, it comes in handy, and I want to actually miss some of these just to see if that was an item. <laughs> if not, then this was a waste of time. But it's it's all right because we're not gonna. Do, I don't think there's anything for us to do after this, so... Like, okay, no, it's just a bunch of rings, never mind. Um, is that it? Okay. It, it, it was, it was, um... It was an exper- it was worth experimenting, at least. Um... If the... If there's no more Guy Gate doors to go through, then we'll just cut to the HD version, but I'm just gonna double check, but yep. Okay, so that's what happens when you do that. I guess we can uh, go back to Apatos quickly and see if he's there. Oh, there he is. What do you have now? Okay, so I guess we need to take another gift. Yeah, there, was, there are some interesting things that happen with the uh, um, NPCs in this game. Um, like, you had, we had the... Um, Brenda character in Missouri that's like, I'll oh, do the quiz, and she does that a few times throughout the game. Um, and then you have this guy constantly giving this girl uh, presents. Um, other characters want to see different parts of the world, and they can't do that until the um, continents are restored. Um, there's a few interesting things that go on um, around the world in this game, and I think that's kind of cool, it makes it feel a bit more like an actual breathing world, um, along with all the crazy amounts of detail that I've paid uh, paid attention to earlier on. Okay, so now, um, Shamar is a place we can't get to until way later in the game, so that's gonna do it, that's gonna have to do it for now, and Sonic's just falling asleep. <laughs> uh. Alright, 
And now, after all that um, uh, messing around, we can go back to the uh, Spagonia level gate thing um, and do the HD version of Spagonia Night. Um, so yeah, I've got another level. Uh, what do they even call these? Like entrance, like level. Um, oh, is it not? Can I not charge it? Okay, I hope it's the fact that... Okay, I, I'm pretty sure um, I'm, I'm, I just can't charge up the punch or anything that, that much yet because um, it shouldn't... Otherwise it shouldn't be like letting go that fast. Um, I'm hoping it's not my controller acting up because that would suck. I have the worst um, experience with like PS3 controllers. Um, like they seem to just mess up on me a lot. Like this one, L2 only works when I'm standing, st when I'm not like using the analog analogs. Um, wait, it's only when I'm using the left analog specifically. Um, L1 seems fine, and both R1 and R2 are fine. I don't know why L2 is like so bugged out. It's really weird, um, but yeah. It does kind of weird me out that the first tornado level is in Spagonia and not like Abatos or something because you play it there. But I guess it makes sense in a way because you do go to Spagonia by the end of it, so I guess that makes sense. Um, but either way, if you want to play the torna tornado stage again, uh, that's where you play it. Um, yeah, we can't really explore anything else here until we go to day, which we could do, but we're going to have to... Uh, do a day stage later anyway, so better to just wait and play the night stage now because load times we've got enough of those as it is, so <laughs> let's just not do that for now. I love how like the, the game doesn't load in uh, fast enough, so like the Werehog slamming the ground thing is like never <laughs> in tune with the music when it's supposed to, uh, when it's supposed to be. That's kind of funny. But yeah, there's a lot, uh, as usual, um, there's a lot of like hidden rooms and whatnot, and just a lot of secret stuff to find here. Um, it's quite a bit more open, I want to say, than the hate, than the Wii version, than the Wii counterpart. Um, um, but like I said, the, um, oh god, the framer is starting to show its ugly, uh, ch ugly face. Um, if there's one thing I will say before I move on to what I was talking about just then, um, one thing I will say about this version is that it doesn't really have the best frame rate a lot of the time. Like, uh, there are some, some points where there's just too many enemies on the screen or there's too many, um, polygons or like what have you and it just the game kind of just slows down because of that um which can be a bit of a shame like it it's not always the worst thing in the world um and i think the ps3 version is generally worse off um uh, in terms of frame rate like it has a higher it, it can it can go up to 60 frames on the best of times but which is high, which is higher than 360 which at most goes to 30, but it doesn't really stay consistent. Um, I'm gonna lower the game audio just a tad. Okay, that should be fine. Um, but like, what is it? The, um, yeah, the 360 at most does 30 frames, um, and this one does 60. Which sounds better in theory, but it also has more of a varying frame rate, I guess. Where it kind of drops down a lot more frequently than 360, from what I remember. Um, I don't own the 360 version, but um, from what I remember playing of it years back, I 
and from like videos and all that stuff. I remember being a, remember it being like a, quite a bit more stable. Not that it's any sane either. It still chugs sometimes too, but yeah, that's something to keep in mind, I guess, with this game. And it's another reason why a actual port for modern consoles or a PC port for this for this game would do wonders for it because. These visuals with no frame drops sounds like a like a blessing really because <laughs> like that would just be amazing like imagine at a bad day with no frame drops um, and I know Unleashed Project exists but uh, I I mean I guess but I see that's more of a separate thing to be honest um, wait I. I, I do like how like Generations looks and all that, um, and there are parts of it that does look more polished, but I still do prefer the look of Unleashed overall, like, it, I don't know, it, this, it, the um, general look of it just looks a lot more, I don't know, I don't want to say shiny, but um, it feels like it's, it's more so putting the systems, um, to its limits, like it, it feels like it's pushing, pushing the system a lot with the PS3 and 360 and whatnot, to the point where I can't really keep up. Um, and I, I don't know, I, I kind of like that. Um, obviously, I know why they toned the Hedgehog engine down for the for un uh, generations to make it run smoother, which gameplay-wise makes sense. It makes more sense to do it like that. But, in terms of just general design and, uh, general, f like, fidelity and whatnot, I prefer, I just prefer how Unleashed looks, just because it just kind of pops more. Um, which is especially impressive since, um, this game uses a lot of, um, environments that are based on real-world locations. Um, so the fact that they, um, they still, they still get a lot of mileage out of it is very, it's very nice. I don't really know what's going on with that, to be honest, but, either way. But yeah, I, men I mentioned earlier in the Wii version that, um, there's three stages in each continent, at least, um, and, or three night stages. Um, whereas the HD version, you only have one major night stage per area, um, and that kind of makes it easier for the Wii version to have specific set pieces and, like, have one act be a specific fit, like, thing, go thing going on, whereas the HD version kind of has to mesh everything together in one big stage. Sometimes it works in its favour, other times the Wii version has the advantage. Um, in this case, I, I would say that this version overall has the better night stage um, for Spagonia. Um, like, like I said, there's more, there's more secret areas, there's more um, open-endedness, I guess, like more space to move around in. Um, and I don't know, I find it more interesting to explore. Um, the level design's a bit more interesting. Well, actually, I don't know if I'd say a bit more interesting. Um, it's hard to say, really. It's really hard to um, say which one's definitively, definitively better because they're both so different. Um, and like, besides being the same um, areas on a technical level, these stages are nothing alike. So yeah, it's hard to really say which is definitive, definitively better, but in terms of how I feel, I prefer the HD version's night stage for Spagonia. Apatos can be argued, um, I'd still probably play the HD version as well for that, but that one's a bit more tricky because there is still, there is quite a bit of platforming and stuff involved in the Wii version, um, whereas Admittedly, the uh, platforming in the HD version of the stage doesn't come in until, like, the end of the stage, really. Like, there's a bit thrown in in between, but most of it is, like, hallways 
and what and uh, like fights and whatnot, um, which is fine. It's first stage, like I said, and it needs to introduce you to the playstyle. So I have no issue with that. Um, but yeah, the Wii version definitely had a lot more platforming for the Avatar stage. Um, so it I can go either way with that one. Honestly, like both of those, I think are pretty good opening levels for the Werehog. Um, but yeah. If I can say one thing is that uh, stuff like this, like we're down in the cellar um, and this is just one single room and I feel like if this if this um, set piece was put into the Wii version it probably would be a, like its own stage. Unfortunately you'd never go down into the cellar in the Wii version, at least from what I remember. Like. What was it? The first stage you go through like the city itself. Second one, uh, you go through alleyways. Third one, you're up in a bridge, and I think that's it. Um, there is a DLC stage in the we uh, HD version layer where you actually do play a full stage in the cellar, which is pretty uh, pretty neat. But I don't think you have that in like the main game itself. Oh, look at that popping! <laughs> um, so yeah, this is a little bit of, bit of a shame, I guess. But hey. We have it in DLC, so at least we have it at all. Um, but I guess it's just something to keep in mind. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but yes, this godforsaken theme playing all the time. Um, it's a good, it's a good battle theme. I'm not gonna knock it for that. It's a good theme. The problem with it is that, as you, as pretty much everyone and their grandma have said by now, um, it plays every single time you go into a fight, um, or even just look at an enemy, basically. Um, and it doesn't, because like, it's annoying because the Werehogs has some of the, um, I don't want to say some of the best, because all the music, all the music in this game is pretty up there. Um, favorite favorite soundtrack in the series, uh, most likely for me. Um, but these are some really good tracks, um, and I'll definitely make mention of the some of the later ones that are uh, definitely some of my favorites. Um, but it constantly gets interrupted by this dinner dinner like again, it's a good theme, it's a good battle theme e e even, but. It doesn't need to play so this like this often to the point where you barely get to hear the regular level theme, um, and this goes for both versions, mind you. Um, and it's kind of a shame. Like uh, the final stage actually doesn't play the battle theme in the HD version anyway. It probably does in a way, um, but I kind of wish they did that all for all stages because it just oh. It just feels, I don't want to say so much better, but having, yeah, like right there, like it, <laughs> it, it, uh, after a point, it's just like, come on guys, we get it. <laughs> right, slam you down. Let's try the um, pile, pile drive again. And kind of fail. Okay, so, uh, there's a... That works. <laughs> there's quite a lot of moves that I don't even know how to perform. I don't know if we have access to some of them yet, but... Yeah, there's quite a lot of uh, experimentation you, t you can do with the combat. Um, so, if you... Yeah, if you pay... Um, make time to actually learn how the Werehog works. Um, I feel like you're going to get a decent amount of mileage out of them. Um, obviously this playstyle I know isn't for everyone um, and I, if I'll be honest I do feel, I do personally feel like people write him off a bit too soon before like really giving him a fair shot. Um, but eh, either way. I know it's not for everyone, but I just, eh. 
what you're gonna do. Just break all this furniture. I don't even need to do this. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm breaking all that. Okay. Yeah, go through all the rooms. Make sure we don't miss anything. Yeah, you gotta look out for like the was it the cyan or like the till color doors? I don't know what shade of color that is. I'm sorry. <laughs> It looks more greyish, I guess. Hang on, fellas, I'll just walk in here. <laughs> you can chill out for a second. I gotta get a book. Uh. Yeah, boy! Okay, so, um... One thing that uh, is a little bit unclear, um, and something I didn't really know how it worked until, like, now basically, is, um, Circle is both your, f like, special combo move, or, or combo move, uh, special finisher, um, as well as your grab, um, so you're, so you'll be thinking just to yourself, wait, how can I grab big enemies, when, uh, when that's just the, uh, finisher? Um, basically how I think it works is that, um, if you're close up and it has the circle button up here, that's when you'll do the finisher, um, and if you try grabbing an enemy from far away and, like, mash the circle button, that's when you'll grab them. It's a little bit weird to explain, but, um, I, I guess the best way to do it is just grab them from far away or something. It's not ideal, of course, like, they could have you made it. So, the finisher command is like a different button, I guess, maybe, but it works for what it is. Um, is there anything back here? No. Alright. I do like the, uh, the whole, like, barrel, giant barrels thing. Like I said, just a ton of stuff to find. Um, it's just good stuff overall. Um... Yeah, that's another medal. Yeah, I think it also just helps that the me um, with the medals, there's always going to be like even in even in the stages in the Wii version that have a lot of collectibles, the HD version will still have more in every level, just by average of having the uh, other items alongside the medals. Um, and I've talked about this before, but, um, I, I like that just because to me that means more things to find and more things to find the more I enjoy exploring. So it's a win for, win for me. Um, and I, again, it's one of those things where I, I understand fr the frustration with others because they prefer a normal level-to-level -level structure. They don't want to have to look for medals to unlock the next stage or whatever. And I get that. Um, but... It doesn't really bother me, personally. Crap. Right, just get in the belly. Nice. <laughs> also, I love how I love how one of the thumbnails was um what <laughs> the uh, for this series has just been the the White Hawk attacking one of those things in in its belly. Like, <laughs> what kind of coincidence is that? Is that? Yeah, I would. I would. I don't know how they would do this, 
But I would love a best of both versions type of game, uh, where it has all the best elements from both Wii and HD. I have no idea how you would do that because, like, I, I, I just, I don't know. <laughs> like, I guess you can implement the guy gate areas in the HD somehow, but. Like, the actual stages themselves, I don't know how you would actually make that function properly. So your guess is as good as mine. But... Something, like... The, uh, that kind of idea does sound really cool to me. Because, like... If you, if, you have, if you brought in all the best elements from both versions, you'd have a legitimate, legitimately pretty ph phenomenal game, honestly. And I already think this is, I, I already think this game's like really great, um, but just imagining a uh, best version of Unleashed kind of makes me foam at the mouth a little bit because it's like, damn that <laughs> that sounds so cool, but I know it's never gonna happen. So it, it can only be a distant dream, if you will. Probably not the best way to word that, but you know what I mean. Yeah, this is a pretty cool set piece that's not actually um, in the Wii version. And this is another reason why I prefer this version of Spagonia Knight. Because I feel like this part here is um, a bit more involved than the platforming you saw in Spagonia Wii. Um, like, the, the Act 3 could be argued, I guess, because you're platforming around the bridge, uh, which is pretty cool, but... There's, I feel like there's a bit more going on here in terms of gameplay, and uh, it's it. The main most of the love has been exploring the regular city and whatnot, um, and it's kind of cool that it ends with this massive climb up the clock tower, like climbing up Big Ben, um, and using all your client like grabbing abilities, swinging on poles and whatnot. And it kind of, it just flows together really nicely. Um, and I feel like flow and game feel is more important to Sonic than really any other franchise. Um, and I feel like that's more important to nail than general, like, speed and how fast you're going. Um, like, the way I see it is I enjoy a, play st a Sonic playstyle if it feels good to play and it flows well. Um, like, for example, with SA2 for instance, you have the regular speed stages obviously, and those those stages nail it really well, because you gotta go fierce, and like, you have all like different areas, secrets, paths, and whatnot, and the, um, the uh, scoring system encourages you to keep keep on playing well, keep on doing all these different tr uh, tricks and whatnot, ex and exploring the levels to get as many points as possible. Um, and, um, like, stuff like treasure hu uh, treasure hunting, it uh, encourages you to find the emeralds fast, um, and the general game, like, the general characters just feel really good to control. Um, and the, th the thing with the Werehog is, as well is that yeah, the gameplay is slower paced than most playstyles in the series, but the platforming still um, keeps going at a pretty consistent pace, and while the combat could be more Bayonetta-inspired than, like, um, than uh, God of War, um, I do think it's fluent enough to work for a playstyle, um, and... The way you can, like, jump on poles and whatnot pretty rapidly, and, uh, all this stuff, like, I, I just, I feel like it just flows well, if that makes any sense. Um, like, it, it's, I know that's kind of a buzzword <laughs> for some people, but it's true, like, um, I don't know, I just, I just, I just think he feels good to good to play as, and um, that's the main thing I'm really looking for with a Sonic playstyle. Um, there isn't, we didn't miss anything, did we? No. Okay, we're good. All right. Cool.
Nice. And uh, let's get some more combos. Yeah, combo is your main thing you want to level up. I still do want to like balance it out a little bit though. Just give speed a little bit. 